Okay, we are uh, at 29.4, section 29.4, the magnetic field of a solenoid. Now, if you were in lab last um, Wednesday, where you played with solenoids, um, and actually we played with uh, uh, basically like little transformers, a, a core inside a, a coil inside another coil. Uh, but this would be the magnetic field inside a, a coil. Now, if you use the right-hand rule, now, if, if you look on the right-hand side, those are little X's, so the, the current is going into the page. Um, so, uh, well, to me, in, into the page is going this way. I know to you it looks like it's coming out of the page. Uh, let's do it. Uh, well, either way, I mean, you can use your own right-hand rule and see when it goes into the page, it curls around this way. Um, and as it's coming out of the page, it curls around this way. And you can see that in the, the, with the green lines of the uh, solenoid. And they all add one to another. Uh, so that you, it, on the exterior, you get this, uh, basically it looks like a magnet. Um, if, you, uh, if you look at the magnetic field lines, they resemble those of a bar magnet, meaning that the solenoid effectively has a north and south poles. Uh, we saw that in the experiment last Wednesday. Um, the, uh, uh, we can use Ampere's law. Uh, we can use it for two different loops, loop one and loop two. The important one is, is loop two. Uh, Ampere's law applied to the rectangular dash path can be used to calculate the magnetic magnitude of the interior field and we use at the bottom you see Ampere's law applied to the circular path whose plane is perpendicular to the page can be used to show that there is a weak field outside the solenoid so let's um, uh, the integral of b dot ds uh, is integral of b dot ds path one plus b dot ds path two uh, it equals BL, um, just the B times the length. You can see L right there is right next to the three. That's the length of the portion of the solenoid that we're looking at. Um, so the integral, integral of B dot S is equal to BL, um, and L is equal to, uh, or, or BL equals mu zero times N, times the current where n is the number of uh, uh, the number of, of turns in the solenoid so b equals mu zero i times n divided by l um, or the small n which is that just the um, number of turns per unit uh, per unit length let's see uh, um, yeah, little n is equal to the number of turns per unit length, uh, which is big N times, um, or divided by L. Okay, for a toroid, it's very similar. Uh, you, you just kind of, you take a solenoid and you kind of wrap it around itself. For small sections of the toroid, uh, it'll, it'll appear somewhat like a solenoid. So for a toroid, um, B equals mu sub zero times, uh, n i the number of turns times i divided by two pi r uh, the circumference of the toroid b for a solenoid is mu zero n i um, so that's equal to, n is equal to n big n divided by two pi r now consider a solenoid that is very long compared with its radius and that's really what you need um, for for a lot of these these rules if you were to have a wide diameter solenoid and very short, it, the equations don't quite match up. Of the following choices, what is the most effective way to increase the magnet, magnetic field in the interior of the solenoid? Double its length, keeping the number of turns per unit length constant. Reduce its radius by half, keeping the number of units turns per unit length constant. Or overwrap the entire solenoid with an additional layer of current carrying wire. Well, if you if you looked at the if you looked at the uh, solenoids that we were working with, the coils that we were working with last uh, Wednesday, you could see that they were overwrapped several times. So, answer C. 
overwrap the entire solenoid with an additional layer of current carrying wire. Okay, and that's where we're going to stop uh, uh, section 29.4.